I, what I want to go through is a fairly lengthy transaction. If you're at home, there's the closing transaction. If you're at home, pick up a piece of paper and work with me on this. All right. What I'm going to show you is a couple of questions on the exam, both mine and the state's, and I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to solve this problem. Now, with that being said, let me warn you. This is a section where if you miss one number, you potentially can miss three questions because the numbers are based on the other number, based on the other number. So when you get to this section on your exam at home, I don't know what you're doing or where you're at, but this would be a section you would not want screaming kids yelling at you or husbands or trying to cook dinner while you're doing this because like I said, you're gonna see here in a minute, you miss one number and you put it in the wrong spot, that column of numbers is wrong, that column of numbers is wrong, and then when you add them up, you're gonna get another wrong number. So make sure you're very tedious when you do this section, okay? What's going to happen is you are, remember those questions in high school, it says, use this information for the next five questions. That's what we're going to go through. But I'm gonna show you the easy way to do it. All right, so what I want you to do on a piece of blank paper, if you're at home, pull out a piece of blank paper. In the middle of the paper, draw a big X so that you actually have four quadrants. If you remember the northwest quadrant and the northwest quadrant, remember how we did that? I want you to do the same thing. You've got four quadrants. The, qua the two on the left-hand side are the buyer's side. The two on the right-hand side are the seller's side. Okay? Let's look at the buyer's side for a second. The top quadrant is going to be the debits. The bottom quadrant is going to be the credits. Why is that? Because most people love to do math where the bigger number's on top and the lower number's on bottom. Where you subtract 10 minus one People freak out when you have one minus 10. Okay, so they put the debits on top for the buyer because guess what? It's his biggest number. He's going to pay a lot. So the debits go on top for the buyer. The reality is it doesn't matter as long as you understand that. They put it on top so that when you do the math and subtract the credits from the debits, you get a positive number. So they put the debits on top for the buyer side. On the right side of the paper is the seller side. Guess what the top one is? Credits. Credits. Why? Same reason. It's a bigger number. And then the bottom one is the debits. The only reason they do that, once again, is so that you can have a bigger number on top, smaller number on bottom. You wanted to do it either way, that's fine. But this is the easiest so you get the right answer without freaking out. Now here's how you solve this. Do not answer any of the questions yet. Let's go through and take every one of these and put them into one of those four pigeonholes. That's the easiest way to do this. That way we make sure we get everything, we don't miss anything. So let's do this real quick, or semi-quick. So what I'm gonna do is read every one of these. I want you to tell me where it goes. So the very first thing we need to talk about is the purchase price. I told you a minute ago the purchase price is a weird one because it's actually a credit to the seller but it's also a debit to the buyer. So in your seller's credit, which is the top one, you would write the purchase price, $278,000.
You would also put it in the buyer's debits of $278,000. So what you got is $278,000 in both of the top boxes. The reason they're both at the top is because the buyer's debits are on top and the seller's credits are on top. So now all we need to do is continue to down. Earnest money, $5,000. What did I tell you that was? That's a credit for the buyer because he's already put it down. When he wrote the offer of 278 grand, he offered up $5,000 as earnest money. So it's a credit to the buyer. Goes in that lower left-hand box. I will make a mistake, I will tell you now, because I'm, I use both hands, so I'm kind of amphibious. I get my left and rights mixed up. I got you guys all so flustered. I'm ambiguous. That's it. It's one of those. Actually, I am ambidextrous. I do a lot of sports left-handed. I jog left-handed. I swim left-handed. It's tough learning to jog left-handed. The appraisal fee of 35 bucks. Who did we say the appraiser has to, who pays the appraiser? The buyer does. It's a debit, so it, let's put it under that 278000 Now we got thirty-five. We're going to add that to his list of debits. Loan balance. One hundred and thirteen five seventy six. Seller debit. Another way of reading that is the payoff. What's the payoff? That's the seller's amount of mortgage he still has on the property, right? So that hundred and thirteen becomes a seller's debit because he owes it. So in that debit column. You'd put 113,576. That would be the lower right hand column. Sellers, debit. Title policy, paid by the seller. Oh, there must have been a negotiation in this prop where they said the title's going to be paid by the seller. All right? So how much was it? 550 paid by the seller. It's a seller's debit. So it's going to go right under his payoff. Of $550. We'll add that to that total. As you can see, all we are doing is creating an accounting column. Attorney split 50 50. So that means it's a debit for both parties. It's $225 as the seller's debit, so it would go in the uh, lower right, but it's also a buyer's debit which means it goes in the upper left where the buyer's debits are. And it's only half because it's split. So 225 one, 225 the other. Deed recording. Debit to the buyer. So put that under the attorney fee. There's $25. Termite report paid by the seller. Seller's a nice guy, isn't he? He wants his house sold. So it's a seller's debit. Put that in the column. Taxes paid in full. Taxes paid in full. What does that mean? That's a prepaid, right? Paid by the seller. So it's prepaid. So that means who's going to get the credit? So we know the seller's going to get a credit. How much? It depends on the date of closing. Glad you asked. Closing date, August 31st. Ding, 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 ding. Houston, we have a problem. What day is August the 31st? Uh, what? I heard mumbling. It's a Thursday. Yeah, that's funny. I have to remember that, though. I'm going to steal that. It's the end 
of the eighth month. So, theoretically, if I had a calendar at a time, I could count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and get to August 31st and realize it's the 267th day out of 365. But what's the easier way to look at it? And this is where I'm showing you a shortcut. The easier way to look at it is exactly what Singh said. It's eight complete months out of 12. Right? So be careful. They are going to do this trick for you, and they're actually helping you, but they think you think they're fooling them. They love to do examples that close on the 15th of the month. That's half. June the 30th, that's half a year. You see what I'm saying? So even though it's not going to be exact, because if you did 267th out of 365 times the taxes, you end up with like $651.12. If you do the eighth month out of 12, you end up with like 650 bucks. You're close enough that you could probably point that out and go, yeah, that's the answer. So let's do it. <clears throat> let's draw a little thing here. There's 12 months. It closes after eight. It's prepaid, so the seller paid it. How much does he get back? He gets paid back for the ninth month, the tenth month, the eleventh month, and the twelfth month, right? So he gets back four out of twelve of the months, right? Everybody see that proration? So four twelfths, which by the way is one third for you math people times the $1,950, because that's how much the taxes were, turns out to be a real easy number of $650. Like I said, if you actually got a calendar out and sit there and counted it, you'd have find out that the true proration turns out to be like $651.12. Now, I'm telling you, in the real world, they will do that, because they've got a computer that can do it real easy for them. On the test, I would do the shortcut because it's going to save your sanity. I don't know. I can never remember. You guys remember that thing? 30 days has January, February. I don't remember any of that. I don't know the saying. Yeah, okay. 30 days says my calendar. I'll look up on my phone. <laughs> I saw something on Facebook the other day where the girl said, you know you're having trouble when you spend 20 minutes in your car looking for your phone using the flashlight on your phone. Yeah. So $650 becomes the name, number. Who gets it and where? The seller gets it because he's owed the money, or the other way of looking at it is he paid the money up front, he's getting burst so it goes under the 278,000 for the seller because he gets the purchase price now he actually gets 650 more dollars for credit that goes back to that little example if I could wave my magic wand he would walk away with 278,650 bucks because those are his credits we're going to find out here in a minute he's also got some debits though he's got to pay for so that takes care of that Loan amount, 75% loan to value. Crap, more math. Hey, how you doing? Would it, would the buyer pay down that 75%? Oh, you're right. I didn't put it up there. My Good catch, because it does go to both sides. I'm sorry. My, I was getting ahead of myself. Yes, it is a credit to the seller, so it goes under his credit. But because it's prorated, he gets that 650 from the other side. You've got to add the 650 to the buyer's debit column. Thank you. That would have thrown my numbers off here in a minute. And then I'd have been exactly where I was telling you not to be. I was just trying to do that to prove a point to you. Yeah. yeah. It's my story. I'm sticking to it. So, yes, as a prorated number, you're going to see that you have to make two entries because one gets a credit and it comes from the other person, whether it's the buyer or seller or the seller or buyer.
depends on the type of bill. Thank you. So now, move it on, before I so rudely interrupted. No. <laughs> Thank you. Loan amount is 75% LTV. Crap, more math. That's where we were and I left off. So how much is the loan? Two hundred eight thousand five hundred sounds correct, isn't it? Or is it two hundred thirteen thousand five hundred? I'm going to go from memory. 0.75 times the purchase price, two hundred seventy-eight thousand times 0.75. Two oh eight five hundred. Thank you. I was, what was I thinking? Two thirteen. But here's the kicker to this. Where does that go? So your credit to the buyer. It is a credit to the buyer. You guys all think that a loan's a debit. Well, it is after we settle, because then I have the IOU that I got to pay. But at the settlement, it looks like that lender slipped money into my pocket of $208,000. So it's a credit to the buyer. So it goes right down here with his earnest money of $5,000, which is where that 213 is coming from in a minute that I was thinking of. All right. We're getting close. Oh, we got one last person to pay. Oh, that's us. Real estate commission of 7%. How much and where? Nineteen thousand four hundred and sixty dollars. To whom? It's a seller debit. So on my list, nineteen thousand four hundred and sixty dollars. It goes under the seller's debits. We have now put every number in its prospective cubbyhole. The hard part is over. So let's now ask the questions. First question is, what is the commission amount? Well, crap, we already done that one. It's 19,460, right? So the answer to number one is already done. The second question is, what is the buyer's tax credit or debit? Well, guess what? We already did that. So the buyer's taxes are here, so it's a debit of $650, we answered number two. Number three, how much does the buyer need to bring to the deal? Okay, so what are they really asking? What they're really asking is, what's the difference between their debits and credits? All right, so let's add up our debits first. These are all the things we have to owe that we got to pay for. Got to pay for the house. Got to pay that $35 title fee. We got to split the attorney. There's our deed recording. And then our share of those taxes that we owe. That debit turns out to be 15, 10, 12, 13, 9, 8. So $278,935. That's how much we owe for this house. But wait, I've already got credits on file, don't I? I gave $5,000 in earnest, and I got this loan from a lender of 208, so my total credits are $213,500. So if I take what I owe, 278,935, and I subtract what I've already paid, or I get credit for, of 213000 Remember, that's why the debits were on top, because that number's bigger. That's the only reason. 278 is bigger than 213. So 435. 65000 $435 is how much this buyer has to bring to the table at closing. 
So now you get this closing disclosure 24 hours in advance. You're the a selling agent. You call your client and go, hey, got the closing disclosure. Everything looks good. You need to bring tomorrow $65,435. The seller says, whoopee. Does that number really shock you? It probably shouldn't because he got a 75% loan to value, which means he's got to bring how much? At least 25% to the table. So it shouldn't really shock you. You shouldn't have been expecting two or three grand because he only got a 75% LTV. So the rest is equity he's got to bring to the table anyway. So that's question three right there, 65K. Guess what four is going to be? What's the seller's proceeds? Okay, so let's add up all the seller's credits. He's only got two. He's got the purchase price. And he got the credit for the proration. So his credits are 278, 651, 650. How much are his bills? I hope someone's already done it. 12, 13, 15, 21, 14, 18, 20. Am I right? 134, 11, thank you. So subtract what he's earned, $134,011. Subtract the 278, 650 are his credits. He owes 134 grand. What do you get? 141. 144, I don't know, that doesn't sound right. One forty four six thirty nine. 639. Somebody verify this, 134. It's right? Okay. So now your seller is going to walk away with a $144,000 check. So that's number four answer right there. So the reality is we technically answered the questions in about a minute and a half because we did all of the hard part of the work up front by putting them in the cubby hole. I'm telling you right now, do that. Do that. You might as well, you're gonna have to anyway. And you're going and as you see, you solve half the questions out of the gate. Is that not the number you got, Tiffany? Since we're recording this, we probably should get the real number to make sure I'm not wrong. Everybody got 134? Everybody got that last 134.011. Let me ask the Indian guy. What'd you get? Okay, it must be right then. So that leaves 144. That would be wrong if it wasn't so true. So that answer comes out, and that's how you do that problem. There are probably a couple of these on the exam, and I think there's one on the state. All right? Any questions about how you work this or this chapter? No? Hasta la vista, baby.